Hi, this is Vic. In this tutorial, we will look at variables in Java. A variable is a storage location that has an associated name. This name is known as identifier and a variable contains some value. Now suppose we have a variable named var which contains 346 as a value. Now, now to represent it in the memory let's assume this is the memory section of your computer and each box is a storage location now the variable will point to some random memory location and will contain 346 as a value now let's look at some variable types now the variables can be of many different types like a string variable that will contain text and an integer variable or a double variable that will contain whole numbers or the decimal numbers respectively so let's see different variable types so in this part we will be covering string integers and doubles and the other data types will be covering in the next tutorial so for now we'll be focusing on these three only now I am assuming that you have read the OOP concepts at firstlearner.com for clear understanding about the objects part. Now everything in Java is an object except for the primitive data types that will be covered in the next tutorial. Now let's jump to the coding section where I will show you the use of these variable types that is the string integer and the double. So this is the same project that we have built in the last tutorial. Uh, let's make a new class in this package that is new java class and name it as variable demo and to follow the convention I'm calling this com dot first learner dot programming basics so it is the website name in reverse that is first learner dot com and com dot first learner now clicking on finish we'll create a class and the package method with writing psvn and pressing a tab so first we'll be starting with the string data type that is write string within capital s because it is a class and we are making a string object and the name i'm giving is a str string str so it's a declaration part so i'll give a comment as string object now assigning a value to this uh, the string values are assigned with a double code let's say a b c and put a semicolon to tell the compiler that this statement has ended now let's see by printing it to the console what str stores so let's run this program by pressing shift f6 uh, as you can see abc is printed one more thing that we can do is combine this assignment and the declaration part and make it a single statement by removing this and giving this value string abc and let's see what result we get see we get the same result and now let's see what happens when we are reassigning the value of string with one to three and now let's run this now here you can see the value is one to three this is because the first string is given the value a b c then it is reassigned that is it is overwritten by the value one two and three one two three and we are outputting to the console by using the println method that is print line method now to actually append 1 2 3 to abc we have to create another string that is string and make it a, give it a different name by giving str1 so these are two different strings and we can concatenate it by using a plus str plus uh, give a space in between by a double quote containing a space and str and str1 now let's see what results we will get see abc space one two three 
now the concatenation is possible but do keep in mind that we can't actually apply arithmetic to a string even though we are using one two three in string it is not a number it is still a string so to do arithmetic we need to have a number type that is an integer or a double and other numerical types java have now let's see the usage of integer now in teacher let's say i equal to 10 now we'll pass out i and let's see what we get shift f6 gives us the result 10 and this is the previous result now we can actually create a string that can have an integer with it what I mean is let's say we have str and we'll make it str plus i and when we output it what we get is shift f6 and the output we get is abc without any space 10 as you can see this here the i is converted to a string when we are assigning it to a string so this is the power of a string we can actually convert anything to a string by just concatenating it in the string now let's remove these statements and let's see some arithmetic in action now i is equal to 10 plus 10 and let's s out it i and shift f6 to run and here we can see we get the result 20 that is what we are expecting and now let's see if we do an arithmetic in string what happens str1 is containing 1 2 and 3 let's say str1 plus i so let's see what the result will be shift f6 to run and oops i have not actually use the s out here let's s out str1 and then shift f6 here you can see it's not actually doing any arithmetic it is plainly concatenating the two stuff that is a one two three and concatenated with the 20 that we have in i here so do keep in mind if you want to do arithmetic you have to have a integer or any other numerical type to have arithmetic operations done now let's get to the double part let's remove this and get to the double part double double are basically used in the decimal points where we need precision values uh, double let's uh, name it as uh, d equal to 346.987 uh, it is any random value and as out it so what we are getting is shift f6 to run and uh, we are getting this value now let's do some arithmetic with it now here we have d equal to 346.987 and let's add i to it that is an integer now you might be wondering is it possible to add an integer and a double yeah it is possible because both are numeric types and we will get the result and here the integer will be actually promoted to a double value which uh, this type promotion will be looking at the later part where i will tell you about the type casting and type promotions and all so you need not worry now and just go with the flow let's shift f6 to receive the result and here you can see 356.98 that 10 is incremented here as you can see this is 346 and this is 356 so there are many other data types available in java that is short and then many others we'll be looking at those in the next tutorial and looking at primitive types there and also the type wrappers that are actual objects 
so this is all for the tutorial and hope you get some knowledge about data types and in future it will be quite useful for you so you may also read more about the data types they arrange the width at firstlearner.com that will be quite useful for you in actually implementing the exact the right data type in your program now this is all see you next time